Welcome everybody. Um, today we will continue our study of tension on pulleys. We will look at pulleys on inclined planes as well as pulleys involving tensions with masses on the table and other masses hanging down. So please pay attention. This is one of the areas that was first tested when AP Physics 1 was given last year. So. Um, Therefore, it's critical. It will be in your exam and then show up. If you want the exam to take place before this weekend, don't show up because I'll know you're well prepared. Um, so let's look at example three. We are continuing. We have a mass. M. This angle is theta. This is a hanging mass. All strings are massless. This is string one, and uh, this is string two. So the question is to determine the tension in the strings in terms of M and the G. Now the very first step that when you are given a problem involving forces is for you to do what? Draw a free body diagram. Um, thank you. Please, this is the attendance. Uh, make sure your name is in here. Thank you. This is a nut. Look up everybody. Tension at a point always acts away from that point. So the tension here is acting away. The tension there is T2. The tension here is T1. And the tension here is T3. I would also want you to see that the tension at this point is acting away. So it's still T3. And the weight here is what? Mg. So if we draw the free body diagram for the mass, you have the weight Mg and you have the tension T3. If we draw the free body diagram for the knot, this is T2, this is T3. And this is T1. Now, it is also worthwhile for you to understand that this angle here is theta, right? If that angle is theta, then this angle should be theta. Um, geometry. Now, T2 can therefore be resolved into two components. You have T2 cosine theta and you have T2 sine theta. Understand that the system is in equilibrium because the system is at rest, which means that the summation of forces in the y direction is zero, and the summation of forces in the x direction is zero. Now let's consider the block. For the block of mass M, we have T3 minus mg equal to zero, which would mean that T3 will be equal to mg. That is the value for T3. Um, if you look at, for the knot, you would have the summation of x equal to zero would mean that T1 will be equal to what? T2 cosine theta. This is T2 and this is T2. Um, similarly, the summation of Fy equal to zero would mean that T2 
sine theta will be equal to what? T3. What do we know? We know that T3 is equal to mg. So this means that T2 sine theta is equal to mg. And therefore, T2 is equal to what? mg divided by the sine of theta. So that gives us the value of T2. Now, T1, T1 is equal to T2 cosine theta, which will be equal to mg divided by sine theta, all multiplied by cosine of theta. And if we sum that up, we are going to have mg cotangent of what? Theta. So that will be T1. That will be T1. Any questions, please? Um, yes? Wh why is, why is um, T3 minus mg equals to zero? Because when you look at this mass, this block is at rest, right? Now, the tension at this point is acting upward. Oh. Remember, the tension at any point along a string it always acts away from that point and along the string, right? So, except at the extremities, so the tension at this point is acting away, which is upwards, and is balanced by the weight of that particular object. Now, let's look at the next example. We have a block. And this block is being pulled by a force F. This block is of mass M. And we have another block on top of mass M. Attach by a string to that wall. This surface is smooth and uh, this is rough. Now, question one, we need to calculate or to derive an expression for the tension in the string so that the blocks move with a constant speed relative to each other. Move with a constant speed relative to each other. Now look up. This is an interesting problem. We have to first of all analyze the forces in the system. I'm going to call this block 1 and I'm going to call this block 2. Now if we choose our system, let's look at block 1. What is block 1 interacting with? The string, it interacts with block 2 and it interacts with the earth. Anything that has mass interacts with the earth. Now, once we've identified what it's interacting with, the question is, what are the forces? The string will give rise to what? Tension that acts away. Block 2 will give rise to two forces, the normal force and the what? friction and the earth will give rise to gravity so when we draw our free body diagram we expect to see how many forces four so the free body diagram for block one now look up everybody block two is moving in this direction what about block one does it stay at rest or move in the opposite direction it stays at rest and if tension if there is tension in this string it means that that tension is balanced by what? By friction acting in the opposite direction. So we have static friction. We have tension. We have the normal force on 1 due to 2. And we have what? Mg. So we recognize that the static friction is balanced by the tension force, which is equal to what? Mu S N12, which is equal to mu s mg. In other words, the tension in the string is equal to mu s mg. This is the tension in the string. Now, what about the free body diagram for block 2? If you look at block 2, it's interacting with 1, the external agent. Let me just call that u. You are the one pulling. It interacts with the earth. It interacts with block 1. And when it interacts with you, it leads to the force F, 
when it interacts with the earth it leads to what gravity when it interacts with block one it leads to two forces the normal force on block two due to one as well as what the static friction well is it static friction or kinetic friction i think it's kinetic because the lower block is moving so if the lower block is moving this should actually be kinetic not static so if we draw a free body diagram we are going to have f n21 m g f k n we actually forgot n because the earth gives rise to two forces gravity and the normal force it's in contact with the earth so we would see that n is equal to n21 plus mg which will be equal to 2mg and f f is equal to fk which is just going to be equal to what mu k mg because we already calculated fk above so you recognize that in this case if the system moves with a constant velocity the force f must be balanced by what the tension in the string yes please yeah remember with a constant speed which means that the acceleration is zero now example five we have a pulley with a mass two masses this is m1 and this is m2 initially m2 is a height h above the ground now also keep in mind that M2 is greater than M1. So when the system is released from rest, what happens? It accelerates. M1 will accelerate upwards and M2 will accelerate downwards. Do you understand me? M1 will accelerate upwards. M2 will accelerate downward. Now this is a massless pulley. This is a massless pulley. Keep in mind that the string from here round the pulley to here is the same. What does that mean? It means that the tension in the string is the same. But keep in mind that the tension is only the same because we have assumed that the pulley is massless. So write it right down, please. As long as the pulley is massless as well as the string anyway the tension in the string remains the same as long as the pulley is massless the tension in the string remains the same now um Let's do this. If we analyze the forces, this is M1G. This is T. This is M2G. And that is T. Recall that M1 is moving upwards, which means T is greater than M1G. And M2 is moving downward which means m2g is greater than y t do you understand that we are going to assume that the positive direction is like that going around we are going to draw the free body diagram for for m1 this is m1g and that is t now for m2 this is m2g and that is t the difference is m1 is moving up and M2 is moving down. Do you understand that? If M1 is moving up, it means for M1, 
it means that T minus M1G will be equal to M1A. Now for M2, it's moving down. It means that the weight is greater than T. So for M2, we have M2G minus T equal to M2A. Let us call this equation 1. And let us call this equation 2. Another way for you to see this is we can rewrite this. If you take the downward to be positive and the upward negative, you can see this as, okay, T minus M1G will be equal to M1 negative A, right? Because the acceleration, no, it will be M1A. This will be M1A because the acceleration is upward. For the next mass, you will have negative T. No. We will have T minus M2G equal to negative M2A. Do you see that? If you multiply, this is equation 1. This is equation 2. If you multiply equation 2 by a minus sign, you would see that you have negative m, negative t plus m2g equal to m2a. And we will get confused with so many negative signs. But you will, you will analyze a lot of this questions and I want to show you a trick that will kind of like take away all the negative signs. We have M1 up and over a pulley, M2. I know, look up please, this guy is moving upwards and this guy is moving downwards. But the acceleration of M1 is the same as the acceleration of M2 because the two masses are coupled. They are connected together. You get it, right? Yeah. They are connected together. It's like two people holding the same, hold the same stick. They have to travel at the same pace to keep up with each other. Um, that is the same thing. Now, this is a massless pulley. So it's if we take the positive direction to be like round the pulley like that, it is synonymous to like you have M1 tied up with M2 and it's been pulled along this direction. I have just expanded it to be flat on the floor, which means that they are both moving and in the same direction. You see that, right? And if you see it that way, then you will recognize that this here will be M2G you will have here T, you will have here T, and this here will be M1G. It's like you spread out everything on a straight line. And if you see things this way, automatically you will recognize that the T's here are going to be what? Internal forces, and they will cancel out. So the resultant force F on the system is just M2G minus M1G. And all of this will be equal to the total to the what to the total mass multiplied by the acceleration, in which case M2 minus M1 all G will be equal to M1 plus M2 all multiplied by A, and the acceleration of the system will be equal to M2 minus M1 divided by M2 plus M1 all multiplied by G. This gives us the acceleration of the system. Um, another way that you could have seen this is the fact that they are all moving in the same direction. If they are moving in the same direction, look up please. Here you have T minus M1G. This is M2G minus T. Look at it through these lenses. This mass is going upwards, which means that the force upward is greater than the force downwards. Recall that in accordance with Newton's second law, the direction of acceleration 
is the same as the direction of what? The net force. If it's accelerating upward, it means that T is greater than M1G. As a result, we could write T minus M1G equal to M1A. Similarly, this M2 is accelerating downwards. Okay, good. Now, similarly, M2 is accelerating downwards. So this means that this M2G is greater than T. As a result, you have M2G minus T equal to M2A. This is equation 1 and this is equation 2. If you add up equation 1 and equation 2, you will end up with something like this will be the T's will cancel and you have M2G minus M1G all equal to M1 plus M2 all multiplied by what? A, which is still that equation. And when you simplify, it will give you this expression. But now, another question that often that is often asked is for you to calculate T. T minus M1G is equal to M1A. We know that A is equal to M2 minus M1 divided by M2 plus M1 all multiplied by G. So if we fit things back in there, T will be equal to M1G plus M1 bracket M2 minus M1 divided by M1 plus M2 all G. All we have to do is do what? Simplify the algebra. And if you do simplify the algebra, your answer will end up to be M1 M2 divided by M1 plus M2 all multiplied by G. Now to see how that's possible, this is like M1 square G plus M1 M2G plus M1 M2G, this, there's a 2 here, plus M1 square G all divided by M1 plus M2. This guy takes care of this guy, and you're left with what? 2M1 M2 divided by M1 plus M2 all multiplied by G. And that will give you the value for T. Um, analyzing the system like this sometimes make it look complicated when it's actually not. If you stretch out the system and put them on a straight line, right? You see that this is M2G, T is acting, this is T, T, and M1G. Automatically, what you will recognize is that the T's will all cancel out because they are internal wired forces. So the net force in the system will be M2G minus M1G. Do you get that? And this explains this process. Now let me give you another example. Example 6. That looks almost alike but it's different. We have a table. This example actually is, the, is one of the questions given in the AP last year. So I'm just going to do it as is. We have a mass M1 attached to a string that passes over a pulley. M2, I'm going to add something to make it fun. Initially, the hanging mass, this is our table, tall table. Now, this is a massless pulley. The reason this is significant is that as long as the pulley is massless, the tension in the string remains the same. When we get to rotation, you will understand why the pulley has to be massless. If the pulley is not massless, the tension in the string will not be what? The same. Now the table is smooth, which means there is no friction between block 1 and the table. Okay. Now let's analyze the forces in the system. Remember I said, when you're given a problem like this, the very first step is what? Analyze the forces and draw the free body diagram. Here... This is M1G, 
The very first question they will always ask you in such a problem is to draw a free body diagram. This is T. This is M2G. And that is T. So if I draw a free body diagram for this system, for M1, I will have T. This is M1G. And this is N. Recall that the reason there is no friction is because the surface is what? Smooth. For M2, we have M2G. This is T. Keep in mind that this guy is accelerating in this direction and this guy is accelerating in that direction. Have you drawn the free body diagram? Okay. Method one, we will consider our system to be equal to block one plus block two. If we consider our system to be equal to block one plus block two, what is the total mass of the system? The total mass is M1 plus M2, right? Which implies from Newton's second law, the sum of forces will be equal to what? M1 plus M2 all multiplied by A. But looking at block one, observe keenly, please. If you look at block 1 and block 2, connected by a third string, the tension here is acting in this direction. The tension here is acting in this direction. You would recognize that the tension are all internal word forces. And by Newton's third law, all internal forces do what? Cancel out each other. Do you understand that? Yeah. Now, Mg, M1g is acting vertically downwards. Therefore, cannot have any, do not have any effect on the motion of the block that is wide, horizontal. Do you see with me? Now, M2g is acting vertically downwards, but it will produce an effect on the system because block 2 is accelerating downwards. So the only external force acting on the system is M2G. Do you understand that? It's M2G. So we have, therefore, we see that the summation of F will be equal to M2G, which is equal to M1 plus M2 all multiplied by A. Therefore, the acceleration A will be equal to M2G, divided by M1 plus M2. This is the acceleration of the system. And you have to explain here that the tensions cancel out, the tension cancel out because they are internal forces because they are internal forces it's actually a consequence of Newton's third law of motion method 2 for method 2 we will consider block 1 separately from block 2 and for us to do that let us remind ourselves with a free body diagram this is M1G this is T and this is N. This is T. And this is M to G. Now, when you draw a free body diagram of this nature, it is helpful for you to indicate the direction of acceleration. Now, I'm going to make this statement. Analyze block 1 and block 2 separately. Do you understand me? Analyze block 1 and block 2 separately because we are considering the both blocks as two separate systems. Okay. Look up everybody. Then if that is clear, then the next question you need to ask yourself is in what direction is the acceleration for block 1? It's horizontal. 
what is the force in the horizontal direction? It's tension. In that case, for M1, we have T equal to what? M1A. Now, let us go to M2. For M2, what is the direction of acceleration downwards? What are the forces T and M2G? Which force is acting downwards? M2G. That means that M2G is greater than what? T. That is why the acceleration will be downwards. In that case, we have M2G minus T will be equal to M2A. This is equation 1 and this is equation 2. If we subtract both equations, you see that the T's all will cancel a consequence of Newton's third law of what? Motion, which will be left with what? M2G equal to M1 plus M2 all multiplied by A. Still, the acceleration A will be given by M2G divided by M1 plus M2. This is the acceleration of the system just like before. So, um, the tension T will be given by M1 multiplied by M2G divided by M1 plus M2. All of this will be equal to M1, M2 divided by M1 plus M2 all multiplied by G. That is T. Another interesting question that you can often be asked is to calculate the velocity of block 2 just before it hits the ground. Assuming the string is long enough. To calculate the velocity of block 2 just before it hits the ground. Now remember that initially V0 is 0. We have been asked to calculate V final. And therefore, us to calculate V final, we know the height through which it falls. We need to know the what? The acceleration, which we just calculate to be what? M2G divided by M1 plus M2. So, if we know, we know that V0 is 0. We are looking for V final. We don't know. We know that A is M2G m1 plus m2 also we know that the distance delta x is equal to what h so to calculate v we don't know the time so we cannot use any equation that has time so we know that vf squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2a delta x which will be equal to 0 squared plus 2 a is m2g divided by m1 plus m2 delta x here is going to be what h this would mean that the velocity just before it hits the ground is the square root of 2 m2g h divided by m1 plus m2 this is the speed of block 2 just before it hits the ground Review these concepts because they will be in the test. Now, let's look at example 7. We have two blocks, one on an inclined plane. Now, keep in mind that M1 is less than M2 and all surfaces are smooth and all surfaces are smooth now let's analyze the forces in this system this is m1g that is n that is t this is t m2g That is N. These are the forces in the system. You would also recognize that we can resolve the weight into two components. 
the component along the plane is always mg sine theta, the component perpendicular is mg cosine theta. If we use method 1, we know that the sum of forces is equal to the total mass, which is m1 plus m2 all multiplied by a. But the question is, what is the summation of force? What you need to do is class. Stretch out the system as if it's on a level surface. You will see that here there is no force. But the only force in this direction is what? Mg sine theta, right? The tensions are internal forces, so they don't count. They cancel out. So we are going to have here Mg sine theta. All of this should be equal to M1 plus M2 all multiplied by A. And therefore, the acceleration is just what? Um, Mg sine theta divided by M1 plus M2. Give me a second, please. Give me a second. Let me do method two before you leave. This is the last example on forces. The next time you meet me, we'll either have a test or we are starting a brand new unit. Um, <clears throat> if we do method two, we will have here for block one, we have T equal to M1A for block 2, we will have what? Mg sine theta minus T, all of this equal to M2A. This is equation 1 and this is equation 2. If we add up the two, we will have here Mg sine theta, this will be equal to M1 plus m2 all multiplied by what a and our answer will boil down to what to the same thing up there do you see that with me if you divide both sides by m1 plus m2 you will end up with this right now can all of you calculate the force the tension t by just substituting the value of a right in there you will see that the tension if you do that T is equal to M1A and A is, this is M2 and A is M2G sine theta divided by M1 plus M2. So if you calculate T, that would be M1 M2G divided by M1 plus M2, all of this multiplied by sine theta. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your patience. And please see you in a little bit for the tutorial session.